I got a lot of comments asking me to make a video on org mode. There were a lot of comments. Okay, there were two comments. So here we are with a new video on org mode. In this video, we'll go from installing org mode to having a look at how it works, seeing what are its uses, and literally there are a lot of stuff which it comes along. So we will be having a look at that as well. Hello everybody, I hope you guys are doing well. Welcome to my channel. If you are new to this channel, I really recommend you to subscribe right away because you're gonna get lucky. I have to say this is my first video showing my face so uh, the camera quality of course is gonna be... I need to get used to this. With that said, let's dive in into org mode and installing it. Huge reminder. This video is for those people who have no knowledge on programming or anything like that. Org mode is an Emacs extension which could be used for many things like maintaining what you want, having your own to-do lists, having your own maintainable files, scripting what you want to do. There are really many uses of org mode. But basically, most people use it for maintaining documents, having to-do lists. Maybe you just want to show a list of stuff to your friend. You can go ahead and then use org mode for it. And it makes your work thousand times easy or maybe million times easy. And on top of that, it also has many other features like creating a website just using org mode, creating org files and then having html files from it and then actually creating a website using org mode with that said let's dive into how to really just use org mode first off we need to go ahead and then install org mode that's the first thing we need to do and installing org mode is really very easy you need to go ahead and then open up Microsoft Edge right here and then just go ahead and say Emacs download now you might be wondering why am I installing Emacs right now the reason being if you install Emacs org mode comes pre-installed right away out of the box you don't have to although it's up to you if you want to use Emacs for creating org files because it's not so user friendly and I don't recommend it if you are a beginner. So go ahead, go to GNU Emacs downloads. Now of course you have the first one being GNU slash Linux. If you are a Linux user and you use a Debian based operating system, just copy paste this and you are done. Uh, if you are using Arch Linux, this is what you need to get. This is for Fedora and this is uh, for OpenSUSE. In this video, I have a Windows machine with me because clearly most people watching this video is going to be using Windows. So just go ahead and then install this for Windows now. Now for Windows, there are again two ways you can go about. The first way is through going to this website and then installing it. The second way I was wondering if we have uh, Emacs package uh, inside Winget. Of course, we are gonna probably have Emacs in the Winget package manager uh, in Windows. Now, that's probably not gonna be mentioned inside the official page of Emacs, but we will have it right here. So go ahead and then just say Winget install. Let me just copy this and paste that that's it that's literally it you are now gonna go ahead and then download Emacs I am gonna go ahead and then pause the video right away and then all right so we have Emacs downloaded right here and it was successfully installed as it says right here which means that you have now successfully downloaded Emacs you can go ahead and then exit and then you can see this is the Emacs text editor, which is probably the most 
unbeginner friendly and the most advanced text editor you can find. Of course, this joins the family of Wim uh, and Nano and so on. So, the next thing we probably need is VS Code. Now, you might be wondering why am I having VS Code downloaded? There's a reason. You don't want to just use Emacs. That's it. That's the reason. You don't want to use Emacs for, well, org mode. It's far easier if you're using VS Code, especially if you're a beginner, since it does not have all the advanced keyboard shortcuts and all of those stuff. So, yeah, I have my VS Code setup downloaded. I'm just gonna close that up. Go ahead and then just install VS Code. Uh, now, it's gonna go ahead and also launch VS Code. And here we go. We have VS Code launched. We have VS Code installed. I'm just gonna close this up. I'm gonna set that up later on. Now, you, what you want to do is go to in extensions and then install org mode. And again, this extension is made for VS Code to make it more beginner friendly and easy. Let's say you're using something like Emacs itself. Well, in that case, you might probably want to go ahead and then install a distribution of Emacs because clearly, clearly, you don't want to use vanilla Emacs. It doesn't give you anything you want. So really good Emacs distribution, which I recommend to most people is called Doom Emacs. That's probably the best Emacs distribution you could find due to many various reasons. Space Max is also good, but again, it's your wish. So let's just dive in with VS Code. So I'm gonna switch over here to my desktop and then open up VS Code. And yes, by the way, uh, for this video, I'm just gonna be using VS Code because clearly it's simpler than any other text editor which you can find. Uh, certainly very different and uh, easier to use when compared to Emacs or uh, Emacs distributions. Now I'm gonna go ahead and then create a new file, click on new file and then you get this. You get an untitled document. Now go ahead and of course say control S and then save it as whatever you want. When I say save it as whatever you want, I don't mean to save it as whatever you want. Save it as whatever you want. And of course, in this case, we want to save it as an org file. I'm just gonna say sample.org. I'm just gonna save that in my desktop and save. There you go. You have your org file set up which is basically an empty file. Now, of course, there are some stuff which are recommended to add for your file in org mode. You don't have to add it. It's not gonna give you any error if you don't add it, but it's of course very much recommended to add due to various reasons. Let's say you're building a website using org mode. And yes, you can build a website using org mode, uh, I have made a video separately on that uh, I'll have it linked up somewhere there and you can watch it later on we can use this to create what we want we'll keep it simple in this video we'll just create a simple to-do list right now and then work our way up in our future videos use cases of this really is endless so there are a lot of stuff which you could do with this. So let's just keep it simple and just get started with it. The first thing which I would probably want to add is a title. So I'm just gonna say a title and then of course VS Code being VS Code gives me this autocomplete syntax right here and I can use it or leave it. 
I am going to use it of course. Alright, so as you can see we have title, uh, all capital letters, by the way you don't want to have this being small letter, this is meant to be capital. You say what the title is, in my case I'm just going to say uh, and then finally I'm just gonna say author and then I'm just gonna say the name of this channel which by the way you need to subscribe to the transition was awful but uh, you get my point uh, we'll also go ahead and then add a description and then you can add any description you want and we are finally ready to actually get started with our org file so org file has something called lists it is one of the really good features of org files and it is what makes org files org files you can use org mode to generate either ordered lists or unordered lists it really doesn't matter as such you can go ahead and then create anything you want so uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and then get started with creating a list so the way you create a list you need to go ahead and then say asterisk and then let's say you want to say this is the header and there you go that is the header and then you can go ahead and then say subheader in here you can say two asterisk and then that would be the second thing in here the first line would be this is the header and then inside that the subheader i don't know if there's anything called subheaders subheader i don't know again i don't know if there's anything called subheaders uh and also by the way just make sure that you have gap right here between the asterisk and the actual headers because you probably saw this uh, it just considers this as a text and not as the header of the file so you need to have space and then you can just continue your way up and then say something else this is the sub sub header and you get my point this is how listing works so let's say you have a list which you want to give let's say you work for a team and then you want to convey a list which you have for that you are gonna go ahead and then say first off main category game for example for developing a game so you are gonna say uh, types of games and then you can that would be the header and then i'm just gonna say sub 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 header and then i'm just gonna say types of games uh rpg you get my point now and then we need something else we need the uh, next part which is probably kinds of games and this would give you all the kinds of games you need to go ahead and then of course write that and then what else do we have you get my point now uh, there are a lot of kinds of games as well so this is how org mode works this is the basic structure of org mode and this is how you could create a basic org file in the next video we'll go ahead and then continue learning what we want to do uh, and then work our way up go to the intermediate and finally the advanced part of org mode now of course if you haven't subscribed you need to subscribe right away you are missing on a lot of content and of course with that said also like like, like. i will meet you in the next video goodbye